having any difficulties picking me up give me a big shout out in the chat all uh, all solid four of you g'day brendan g'day dan how you going all right people joining great we'll give it a minute or minute or two just um to let a few more people come um and uh then we'll crack on with it we're going to talk about today so we've got some overhead airplane traffic here today uh, i don't know if you can hear that but um what we're going to talk about today is um the ultimate systems implementation strategy of pinch so you could put it in put it in this way it's like if i was running a business using pinch this is how i would use it um knowing what i know um, this is this this is also putting it specifically in the context. G'day, Jason. G'day, Nathan. It's also putting it in the context of like you know how to how to have that conversation with a potential merchant from the you know point of like initial consultation through to actually helping guide them through a bit of a change process. I won't go too detailed because it probably bore the crap out of you, but um, yeah, give you some of like the key pointers, the key highlights, and um, sort of just the basic fundamental process, and then. Obviously, if you have any questions or there's any specific wrinkles that um, you think I haven't addressed throughout it, just throw a question up in the chat and, and we'll answer it. Um, you might see that we've got a uh, another presenter here today. Uh, this is Tom. Tom's from Better Marketing Results. He's one of our partners. Um, as I mentioned on the last partner call, we are giving the partners the opportunity to reach out and have a chat to you guys on the webinar every month. And Tom's volunteered to be the first to do that. Uh, Tom's uh, a, uh, an agency owner that runs an SEO specialized agency, um, specially vertically targeting accountants as well as some other verticals. But um, I'm going to give Tom the floor for a couple of minutes uh, to start with to kind of give you guys a bit of an overview of his business and maybe even talk about your experiences with Pinch so far, uh, Tom, if you're interested in, in that. But uh, no pressure, mate. Uh, over to you. <laughs> Uh, I very much support Pinch just to get that in. No, no, <laughs> I'm just just kidding. I, so I use Pinch um, and I use it obviously a lot within my business. And, um, you know, I just get pre-approval straight away from clients and it saves so much of a headache later on down the, the track because we all have <laughs> clients who say, oh, I thought I paid that or, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I did that or for whatever reason. So it just saves so much time for me. And, um, and I actually recommend it to all of my clients. And as Joe just said, a lot of my clients are accounting firms. So I, and the business I own, we do um, a lot of SEO for accounting firms, but we specifically more just help them as a business. Um, and that comes down to uh, a tailored strategy. So one of the things that we do a lot of for accountants is building positive online reviews. So accounting firms always, uh, you know, word of mouth referrals are always going to be the most valuable thing they ever get. Um, so we actually put that online for them. So we'll go and get them Google reviews on autopilot. So we'll build those up for them. We'll make it so that they don't really get any negative reviews or they get a chance to respond to negative reviews privately first. And we find that in combination with some email marketing, SEO, um, we don't really use ads for accounting firms. It hasn't worked for in the past for what we've seen. Um, but in combination with a full strategy there, it generally results in um, uh, some really good results for them, which is, is to be realistic is sort of we're talking about spending about uh, eight or nine months working on it. And at that point in time, generating between five and $15,000 in new client fees from small businesses. Usually um, we're targeting that $1 million turnover range for them as well, like turnover range for the clients that they're after. Um, so we again recommend pinch within all of those areas and that is where we specialize, but we also do um, a lot of SEO work and other marketing work for other niches and verticals. We work a lot with mechanics, um, you know, all across here in Brisbane, but obviously in other cities around Australia and we work a lot in New Zealand as well. So. Um, Outside of that, uh, I personally also practice what I preach and we have our own e-commerce brands and our own businesses that we run marketing for. Um, so we have an e-commerce brand, we're doing between 500 and $1,000 a day of just sales using our own SEO, advertising and that sort of thing. Um, so it's really good because it enables us to be sort of picky about our clients and we can go through and go, here's the firms we want to work with, which are the firms we can help best, which is typically accounting firms. So that's that's where we sort of niche down. That's what we do. And outside of that, some firms use us as an overall marketing manager. You know, they don't want to employ someone that's a new uni grad who's just studied marketing for 60 grand a year to do all their 
their marketing. So they just come to us when they need it. And um, we set the strategy and do the planning for them and do everything from business cards and printing to full-blown lead generation campaigns with sort of guarantees about results and that sort of thing. So that's the full roundup of, uh, of our business and how we help people. I won't take up too much more of your time, but thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to present, Joe. I really appreciate it. No problem, Tom. Um, so thanks very much. Uh, I've put a link to Tom's website in the chat. So if anybody's interested in having a chat about uh, any of the services that Tom mentioned, um, reach out to him through the website or um, even, you know, ask me for an intro and I'll introduce you via email. Um, thank you very much again, Tom. Remember, if any of you guys want to present uh, a you know next month or the month after, just let me know and we'll slot you in. There's no cost to you or anything like that. It's just you know part of the the perks of being uh, a pinch partner. All righty. Moving on. So let's talk about systems implementation. So in the context of uh, yourselves consulting to your customers, uh, it, it's important to understand like why pinch is actually going to be of benefit to them um, so that you can actually really create some positive engagement and interest and excitement because what we're going to talk about here is the ultimate implementation and the ultimate implementation is a challenge right so if they haven't got you know real solid commitment up front from from like you guys having actually uh, established what they what they stand to gain from it um, they're, they're not usually resilient enough to withstand the, the challenges uh, that, um, that, it, that it presents um, because it is quite a significant change process to, to get to that point of like ultimate uh, implementation. But I assure you the benefits are, are quite extraordinary. Um, so uh, why, what Pinch is, is a, a business that solves the problem of aged invoicing. Right. So there's there's you know a few businesses out there that talk about that. I mean, Zero will talk about themselves that way. Intuit QuickBooks talk about themselves that way. Uh, but we actually get right into the nitty gritty and actually like work with the customers, not just giving them the tools, but we actually also work with them in, in helping them actually plan. And that's sort of something that we've only started to really tackle as a business over like the last 12 12 or so months. So we tackled that and we also obviously um, provide benefit when it comes to efficiency gains in businesses, spending less time chasing payments, spending less time doing, um, you know, basic accounting and bookkeeping stuff like uh, reconciliation and stuff like that. So what the flow on effect of that is, is we actually help businesses grow, right? So businesses that, um, you know, have no issues of, of this nature tend to grow faster. There's, there's actually data that's been released by Zero that actually says that businesses that don't have overdue invoice problems grow three times faster than those that do. And when you factor in the fact that over 90% of small businesses in Australia report themselves as having aged invoicing problems, we're talking 90% of Australian small businesses aren't growing at the rate that they could be if they solved that problem. So it's quite a substantial win, not just for any individual uh, business, but also the economy in general, if we could create some positive forward momentum and actually view this late payment problem as what it really is, which is quite a you know economic issue here in Australia. There's billions of dollars of overdue invoices um, that are currently sitting there unpaid. I'm sure there's plenty of you on this call that run businesses and you've got aged invoices. Tom's you know spoke about that. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a serious issue and um, it's something that we want to really actually go after hard um, so, uh, what's um, what's important to uh, understand is the the underlying causes of late payment actually differ from business to business, but probably not as much as you think, right? So, we we talk here at Pinch about our pillars. Um, so, our three pillars when it comes to the small business service side of our of our business are wholesalers, home services businesses, and B two B businesses. So. Each of those different businesses has slightly different uh, issues when it comes to, to late payments, slightly different reasons. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, largely, um, it's largely the same across like all businesses inside of those sectors. So, for instance, home services businesses, like we're talking businesses like uh, from domestic cleaners through to Meals on Wheels through to, um, you know, music schools, Basically, anybody who is a B to C kind of business do, doing services to the family uh, or to the home, 
The reason that these businesses tend to have overdue invoicing problems is simply just like personal overwhelm. Like, so I can speak for myself here. Um, you know, when our lawnmower dude sends me an invoice, I forget to pay it like probably two thirds of the time. I just literally will just forget to pay it until he chases me later. Um, and when you're running a lawn mowing business by day and you're sweating up a storm all day, the last thing you want to be doing is like, you know, contacting your, uh, your, your, your overdue payers at night or you'd be just like chilling on the couch with the family uh, or, or doing something like that. So, you know, the problem is super, super simple to solve. Usually it's solved with a, with a, you know, a text message or an email, but you don't want to be doing that. And not only that, but like a lot of business, a lot of business owners don't, feel comfortable doing that. Like actually having that conversation with people can be like really sort of daunting and overwhelming thing for, for certain people. So um, what you find in that space is that the actual appetite for the pre-approval is really, it's really there. Like there's not all that much disappetite for it. So when we talk to domestic cleaning firms and we talk to lawn mowing companies and we talk about ultimate implementation of pinch, what we actually find is that their appetite for it is also quite, you know, quite there because they, they're talking about business uh, services where it might be like a hundred, two hundred dollar invoice um, that they're sending on a month, uh, on a weekly or fortnightly or monthly basis to this customer. So the customer is not going to be too put off by it. Um, and the business, and if they are, the business usually can sort of be resilient and be like, well, look, it's this is how we're going to be moving forward. When it comes to business services like B2B, so accountants, uh, bookkeepers, uh, digital agencies and stuff like that, it tends to be more um, of an issue depending on the invoice volume. So the amount, um, you know, if the amount's smaller, the payer appetite for the pre-approval is higher. If the amount's um, higher, it can be a little bit um, more objectable. Um, but the system does give you the ability to actually set limits so that if you're, you know, say you're a business that's delivering uh, mixed services where you're doing a project every few months and you're doing like a recurring service work like maintenance or something like that, um, you can actually set it so that it only auto debits under a certain amount, um, stuff like that. But ultimately, you know, we still have customers in our system that are actually on pure pure 100% pre-approval model that are sending $5,000 a month invoices for digital marketing retainers, um, you know, IT consulting services and things like that. So it's still plausible, it's still doable and ultimately really comes down to just, you know, most of these businesses just get to a certain point where they just can't handle it anymore. They're just over it. They can't deal with it anymore. And they just say, stuff it and go for it. And then, oh, look out, lo and behold, it worked. Lo and behold, um, our customers were resilient enough to do it. So it's usually up here, you know, it's usually like just a, the, the, the objection that you get at first when you start talking about the idea of going 100% pre-approval is, is, is usually a bit psychological. The wholesaling space is different again. So the wholesaling space is like the main reason is because, well, we see, we also need to probably also split wholesaling a little bit because you get some wholesale businesses that are like doing, you know, one order a month, one order, uh, you know, every couple of months uh, if it's not perishable. So we see most of our wholesale customers coming from the food and beverage wholesale space. So things like coffee roasters, craft brewers, uh, fruit and veggie suppliers to local restaurants and things like that, because they're what they're doing is they're sending out orders sometimes daily to cafes, sometimes like you know three or four times a week, but frequently. Um, so what and and also they can't really um, they they could but they don't tend to ensure that they get payment up front before they ship. They'll have a truck driving around delivering service uh, delivering the products uh, locally um, and. Before they know it, you know, they've got 15 invoices in their SIN 7 core or in their zero file or whatever for that local cafe because the cafe owner pays their accounts monthly. Now, we all know like how volatile the hospitality space is. These businesses pop up and fall over like frequently. So the, the pre-approval solves a great, a great uh, problem for the wholesaler. They're de-risking their business, but the payer behavior actually also is more resilient to it because cafe owners and restaurant owners 
tend to be more like home services type payers where they're, the main reason that they're actually not paying their invoices isn't so much that they don't want to, it's that they would be, you know, they would have no time in the day to actually run their cafe or run their restaurant if they were constantly having to, you know, do their bookkeeping on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, that's, you know, that that's the main reason. So, you know, putting, and, and because, you know, we're talking most of the time, two, three, four, five hundred dollar invoices when they're at that frequency. So they can be resilient enough to actually um, accommodate that in their cash flow. So the long story short uh, is that like, if you really like separate out the, the types of businesses that could potentially be using pinch into those different pillars, you'll see that the, the, the challenge of getting to that pure, like 100% pre-approval is actually um, greater for some businesses than it is for others. But it also means that you, you probably need to um, have maybe a little bit more upfront conversation with businesses that are going to be met with a bigger challenge um, and put a little bit more time uh, up front in, in sort of convincing them that it's going to be a good thing for them. So we're talking about pre-approvals. Um, so to be clear, um, I'm hopeful that, um, you know, everybody here knows what a pre-approval is, but you know what they say, don't assume. Um, so um, I'll give you a little bit of an overview. So, um, you know, the pre-approval system is basically uh, a way for you to store customer payment details in our system so that the connected invoicing system, whether it's zero, QuickBooks, Myob, or even software systems that sync into those platforms um, can be used to generate invoices on any cycle of any amount, and it'll automatically get processed by Pinch. And that's just because of the way that the systems are connected. When you have a pre-approval in place, when you raise an invoice, it'll just automatically come out on the due date unless there's not enough money in the account. So for a business like Jetlag Remedy, who is one of our partners as well. So, you know, we've what we actually find are the businesses that go to this 100% pre-approval utopian dream, they actually bite the bullet and they do it. They become so evangelized. They become so happy with, with Pinch because they see not just the benefit on their business health, but on their personal health, like the having to chase payments all the time and not actually be getting... The, the payments for the work that you're doing is really psychologically damaging. Like it, it can cause a, like a real imposter syndrome thing, uh, especially in new business owners and new small business owners. So if you're talking to, you know, new businesses and consulting into new businesses, you're actually going to be protecting them from like a lot of self doubt and, and a lot of anxiety uh, by actually getting them to adopt this stuff up front. But I digress. Jetlag Remedy have done this. They've gone from like having like a perpetual state of thirty thousand dollars of aged invoicing, all and uh, now they've got only their NDIS payments, which is like two thousand um, dollars, and there's no you know way around NDIS payments. But um, not only that, but now they're like you know a multi million dollar a year concern. Um, Simone spends more time on community development, uh, philanthropy, thought leadership marketing like she's like a TikTok juggernaut because she doesn't have to spend time chasing payments and doing basic accounts receivable so it acts like business fertilizer it, it does like it's like it's 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 such a no-brainer it's it, like I, I i talk to people and i think to myself i'm like how is it not so prevalent that everybody's adopting this but truly it's it, we still in australia like vastly um, just send invoices to receive payments and just sort of leave it up to the payer. That's that's the paradigm that most businesses operate in. So I'm going to have to figure out why my images don't show up so much. Must be SVG or something like that. As I mentioned before, like in the, in the um, you know, I guess like at the lower end of the market, when I say lower end of the market, I mean like B2C or dealing with other small businesses, everyone's pretty chill when it comes to this stuff, it's like you can straight up have a conversation with them and be like, hey, um, I don't want to chase you. You don't want to get that awkward call. Just sign up to a pre-approval. And like, honestly, 99% of the time, they'll be like, yeah, this is fine. It's all good. Um, but it's when you're dealing with businesses that are like bigger than you or have their like, you know, internal accounts payable system in place and stuff like that. Oh, we got 60 or 90 day payment terms. That's when you can run into a bit of a, a, a headache. We have some approaches to that. Like there, at the end of the day, like you can still run a 60 or 90 day payment term with a pre-approval. Um, it just, because the payment doesn't come out until the due date. 
So when somebody goes, oh, I want 60 or 90 day payment terms, the reality is that they, they still pay late on average. It's actually 35 days overdue on average when there's 60 or 90 day payment terms in place. So they don't actually, they usually still don't pay you on time when they have those terms in place. So what you can do is you say, well, the pre-approval is not going to auto debit you within that window. It'll take the payment out on the 60th day. It's just, a, it's just there for me to ensure that I actually get paid from you. It's a very reasonable point to raise. So, um, because that's just how the, how the system works. It just auto debits on the due date. Uh, we see a question there from Fiona. So you got a question about the home services pillar. Does the business have to have accounting software or could they just use Pinch for invoicing and collections and an Excel spreadsheet? Well, read more. Actually, you, you, are, you are correct. You don't actually have to have an accounting system. You can sign up to Pinch as a standalone system um, and you can actually generate the payment links from Pinch. You can create payments inside of Pinch. You can pay subscript. You can set up subscriptions from Pinch. Um, you can even generate payments from an Excel spreadsheet using our Zapier integration. Um, so you could actually add, like, add a row to an Excel spreadsheet using like a type form and then use our Zapier integration to you know, fire a payment into the portal and um, collect a payment that way. So yeah, there are, there are actually um, some interesting extra ways of going about that. Happy to talk about that uh, offline in a little bit more detail. But yeah, the short answer is yes, you don't need an accounting system. So uh, essentially, the, 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 there's only really going to be like two, two kind of payers, really, when you think about it. You're going to have somebody who's going to be chill and accepting of it. And the problem is usually going to just be upfront, just making a, a significant change, especially if the business is already established. And we'll talk about like the actual like process to follow um, on, a, on a later slide. But when you're actually dealing with businesses that are bigger than you that have payment terms, that's the objection handle. The objection handle is to simply point out that, you know, this, this pre-approval is not there to, you know, get me paid ahead of your payment schedule. It's there to ensure that you don't pay me late. And I honestly say to businesses, small business owners that are doing business with businesses that are larger than them, that like, especially when they're accounting for a large percentage of their revenue, really should rethink um, whether you can withstand the risk of that. Um, and I, I could talk about this at length, but um, in my experience as a small business owner, like doing business with the bigger businesses was some of the hardest, most challenging, problematic um, things because they just, they just, they, they, they have you outstripped when it comes to complexity, when it comes to savvy, when it comes to, um, you know, their agenda, their agenda is not to pay you. Their agenda is to keep the money in the bank account as long as they can. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's questionable. Um, there's, there's definitely, um, you know, if I was doing business consultants and new businesses, I'd be like, stay, stay shoulder to shoulder with businesses of your own sort of size cohort in the early stages. All righty. Yeah, so uh, the, 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 what we have is basically um, devised a bit of a, a five-step sort of process for getting uh, a customer to that point of cash flow certainty, that ultimate implementation that's on the next slide. Um, and as I've, as I've sort of alluded to with likes of jet lag remedy, um, and so many others, I, I could, I could, uh, I could give you a big list of different case studies if you like, um, to supply to your own customers, but, um, it does have a drastic effect. And these are the five steps. Uh, so basically the first step is changing your onboarding practices before the call. I was having a chat to Tom about this very thing. Um, you know, if you're signing somebody up and you're not putting them on pre-approval straight away, what are you doing? Um, the system does have new customer sign-up link in it. So you can literally send somebody uh, the form to fill out and it'll also, also auto-sync them into the connected accounting system. That's great. Um, you know, if, if they come in through a different onboarding system and go into the accounting system separately, they'll flow into Pinch and you can just go and grab their launch customer page. You can just go into the system and open the page. You can take the details yourself. You can like, you know, if you're only onboarding one new customer a month or one new customer a fortnight or something like that, you can afford to really like handhold them through that process to make sure it gets done. Um, you don't have to necessarily automate everything. Um, and sometimes, you know, relying on the customer to actually fill the details in doesn't actually make sense from an efficiency perspective because you might schedule the work in 
and you'd be waiting for them to do the pre-approval and you have to keep one eye on whether they've actually filled the, the pre-approval form out before you're even willing to start the work. And you know, that's 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 too frustrating. So sometimes it's better to just like manually do that process and, and open that form from the back end of the system and fill it out yourself. But it is, it's truly the, the most important part of adopting the ultimate implementation is to change the onboarding practices. The second one is an interesting one. So like what we do is we, we, we go now tackle your existing overdue payer base. So your existing overdue payer base is, is going to be the hardest part. Um, so, you know, you start off with the changing of the onboarding practices because it's a quick win, it's easy, all your new customers come on board, as Tom's pointed out in the chat, it's it's really easy to con to, to convince them at the point where they're engaging you for the first time. It's, it's not really going to be met with too much disagreement. Um, but the overdue payers, you might have some challenges with. There you go, Brandon, that's how it's done. Um, so what, what you can do with Pinch um, is you can actually take payment um, through the system. It has a virtual terminal and a lot of our merchants don't realize that. So what you can do when you're actually chasing payment, and this is why we always talk about making sure whoever is involved in the business that's the person who actually does the accounts chasing is actually involved in the initial implementation conversations and is actually part of that uh, part of that training process that you might put customers through or that we put customers through. Uh, because you want them to be actually opening the, the payment in the back end of Pinch when they're doing the chasing so that they can do one of two things. Either they can take the payment over the phone if the customer is willing to actually give them the details over the phone or put them on a payment plan if the customer is not willing. So what we do is we say, ask them to, to take the payment over the phone. If they say yes, ask them if they can go into a pre-approval moving forward to avoid it. It's a really good time to actually have that conversation with a difficult payer because if they're actually willing to pay that invoice, it's like, so we don't have to chase you next time, Bob. Can we just put you on pre-approval? When you actually process that payment from the back end of Pinch, there's a simple little checkbox you can check. So when you're filling the details, you hit the checkbox, you hit make payment, and uh, it sets up a pre-approval at the same time. So um, it's it's really quite an easy process um, change for a business that's doing a lot of like overdue accounts chasing, uh, which is everyone. <laughs> so, you know, if there was one thing I could click my fingers and do, it would be to make sure that every person who's involved with our, our merchant base that chase payments knew that that was there, because <laughs> it would uh, it would be a pretty life changing thing for a lot of a lot of business owners to know. Um, very simple. Uh, the other the other thing is that if they do say no, which you know a lot of the time they will, um, you can set up invoice breakdown payment plans and offer them a payment plan. <clears throat> so you can basically click the choose payment plan button. On the uh, on the system, and if anybody wants to actually be walked through the platforms and to be shown any of this, just shoot me an email, and I'll do a I'll do a Zoom call with you, uh, in, in, in on, a, on a separate conversation, and just show you the specific parts of the platform. Uh, but yeah, you can break down the invoice into four weekly payments, ten weekly payments, whatever. Like you can set up as many different invoice templates as you want. Uh, it's quite easy to break it down. You just like set the percentages and payment frequency. So if you want ten, you set the percentage at ten percent payment frequently, frequency seven days. So when you're actually chasing that payment, you can then choose that 10 weekly payments payment plan. Um, I don't recommend creating them on the fly because it just creates a bit of an unnecessary headache. Just literally have your standard payment plan templates there. And then if somebody asks you for one, you go, this is what we have to offer. And you pick that one. Uh, it's less training. It's less of a problem for you. Uh, you know, when it comes to continuity, the next person who comes into your business that oversees that process is doing the exact same thing. You don't have to worry about training them into creating payment plan templates and stuff like that, which can be a bit of a uh, nightmare, a bit of a minefield. I've seen plenty of merchants run into troubles trying to create <laughs> the payment plans for every single person. Fiona's got no Fiona's got no overdue invoices because she's on pre-approvals. That's right. So, but the thing is that when you, you know, when you're first onboarding a pinch customer, almost everybody does. Like we don't really see people who come to pinch without an existing overdue invoicing problem. So um, when we're talking about you guys consulting to your own customers, you're gonna find, and and I guess it's probably worth pointing out, like that's sort of where we would suggest that you look for opportunities when it comes to referring for the the the, the payment. Uh, pinch payments platform, the SaaS platform itself. Yeah, um, but the um, the the the. I mean, obviously, we have enterprise API solutions and stuff like that too. It's a whole different ball game. We're not talking about that so much. Uh, step three. This is this is a this is the a big one. It's it's you know we've gone easy hard back to easy. 
Step three, we're talking about your good payers here, right? So once you've got through like tackling the, the overdue payers and you, you know, you've worked through them one by one and just got them onto either the pre-approval or onto a payment plan to pay down that that overdue invoice there before, you know, you know, with a view to getting them onto a pre-approval later. Um, you want to you 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 still should be trying to get all of the customers onto a pre-approval because eventually everybody pays you late. <laughs> uh, but also you don't get that 100% like efficiency gain if you're like still processing payments through EFT because you're still having to do a bit of manual rec. Um, you, you're still having, you're still not getting that like pure 100% um, like, you know, automation effect. So what we've done is we've, we've added a new feature to our customer portal, which should have been there in the first place, but I digress, which allows customers when they're setting up their customer portal to opt into the pre-approval. Um, now you don't want to like upset the apple cart with your best payers. So you don't want to like go hard at them and say, we're moving to pre-approval, right? Like we're moving to pre-approval. It's our way or the highway deal with it. You don't really want to take that approach with them because it's unnecessary. Uh, it creates, creates friction needlessly. The customer portal is awesome. It's probably the most user-friendly part of the platform. Uh, people consistently report that they enjoy using it as a payer. Um, when you invite somebody to the customer portal, what we see is that there's a 50% success rate when it comes to them adopting the pre-approval, which is remarkable because it's, that's higher than the success rate of, the, of sending the pre-approval invitation itself. Yes, so it, you will have better success getting somebody onto the pre-approval by inviting them to the custom, inviting them to the customer portal than you will inviting them to the pre-approval. So, yeah, basically the system's now designed so that you can jump onto the customer screen. You can search, uh, filter by has been invoiced in the last thirty or sixty days. Select all, press the invite to the customer portal button. Do that to all of your best payers after you've uh, chased all of your overdue invoice payers, or, you know, at the same time. Obviously, you don't have to do it in, in this order. Step four, this is another uh, sort of new feature you probably all know about, but like, you know, when we're talking about consulting, this is this is how you would tell somebody to do it, or this is what you would do for them. Um, there is a new surcharging option called absorb transaction fees if they're on pre-approval, right? So, uh, basically what you can then do is you can modify your uh, invoice pay now email language to be like if you want to go on if you don't want to pay the pinch fees um, you know go on to pre-approval not everybody surcharges obviously so if you're not surcharging potentially you can switch to surcharging for pay now and you know only offer fee free transactions when it comes to pre-approval customers as a, as a means to an end of getting them onto pre-approval. That's the, the reason we've developed the feature anyway. So we've seen a lot of success from customers who've chosen to go, to go down that path. Now, it's important to note that like, you know, in the home services sector, because the appetite for pre-approvals is there, you don't yet actually really have to do it. <laughs> uh, it's more for where, it's more for the industries for where, which like, it's a little bit more hard you know, a little bit more challenging to kind of get the adoption. And step five, you got to you got to stop taking payments through other systems because the system will gradually move people onto pre-approval just basically because you're using it as your invoice pay now system. So when they click the pay now link on your zero invoice templates, they will see they will consistently see the option there to opt into pre-approval. If you've got the surcharging option on you know, uh, sorry, the absorb pre, uh, fee option for pre-approval pre on, and you mention that in your zero emails, a lot more people are just going to automatically um, choose that option. But if you've still got EFT or you've still got other payment methods that you're accepting, um, people will just continue to do what they're doing. Once they've established a behavior, they will stick to it. So eliminating your other payment options, saying this, you, know, you, know, you can only pay us through pinch. doesn't matter. You can pay now if you want to pay the fee. Go on pre-approval if you don't want to pay the fee. Um, that's, you know, that's the final, uh, missing piece that I think most people, um, don't, don't get to now, obviously, you know what, like if you've got one or two payers here or there that you just don't want to rock the boat for, and they're paying you via EFT, whatever, that's fine. But we're talking perfect implementation. We're talking to the partners too. So we're talking to got to you guys about ways to actually drive utilization rate to get your customers, not just to, you know, adopt the platform, but to actually transact through the platform because obviously it has a, has a flow on effect to the amount of referrals that we can then uh, referral fee that we can then pay you. So um, that's the, you know, that's the uh, unspoken bit of what I'm presenting to you here. Yes, yeah, so 
as a partner, implementing pinch will actually have a tangible effect on the growth of your customers. So like if you, uh, you know, if you're growth consulting uh, and you're talking about growth and you're not actually helping them achieve automation on payment, you're only scaling up a bit of a problem. So, you know, and every man and his dog now talks about themselves as something, something of a growth consultant. So, um, you know, it's really important, um, I think, that businesses, especially accountants and systems implementation companies and, you know, growth consultancies actually get their heads around the fact that payments uh, is actually probably the most important aspect demand generation and stuff like that is 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 a big deal and like you know creating uh, efficiencies in other areas is 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 important too but like what how good is how good is like demand growth if your payments aren't coming in or if you're just creating more of an overhead headache that you have to throw more resources at managing it doesn't make any sense to me cash flow certainty is is what you will give your customers cash flow certainty is this utopian state that business owners find themselves in when they know that like every invoice that they generate is going to get paid it's 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 something that most business owners have never felt before but i i, I speak to them i speak to business owners that have done this and they all report the same thing it's 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 mind-blowing you, you just have to look at the feedback in our zero app store um you know the fact that we've actually got partner signups that are just, just outright merchants because that they believe in the product so much and they believe that you know, the experience that they went through transforming their business is something that other businesses should, you know, should actually feel as well. Um, what do we got here? And yeah, as, as, as I've sort of alluded to, we have those three pillars and it, it does sort of filter down into some very specific types of businesses from there. But ultimately, any business that sends invoices waiting for payment, letting their customers pay them at their own discretion, especially when it's repeat, but like not even necessarily, as long as it's like invoice and wait, should be doing it this way. Uh, and there's no reason that they can't be doing it this way. Um, we've got businesses, like we've got literally like a, a prep to year 12 school using our system to take tuition fees now. Like there's there's really no limitation to the type of business that should be considering doing this, uh, aside from talking, you know, e-commerce and, um, you know, potentially like, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollar government contractors and things like that. But like when we're talking about small businesses that are sending invoices to receive payment, it is what it is. It's just it's just the way that everything should be moving. So that's that brings the preso to an end. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, Fire away any questions you might have uh, or uh, any uh, ideas, any unique uh, things that you guys have, have been doing. Thanks so much for being so communicative in the chat, by the way, especially Brendan and Fiona and uh, Nathan and co that were having a, having a good chat. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been really, really fun getting to know all of you guys, all, all of the partners and um, you know, establishing a, a, a bit more of a rapport. Um, and we uh, like are happy to report that we are actually seeing, you know, seeing the benefits of it. Like our partner channel has become our primary channel uh, for merchant acquisition, uh, which is, you know, something that if you told Paul and Ben that six months ago, they wouldn't have believed was possible, honestly. So uh, I'm very proud of, of um, what we've been able to accomplish in short time on that front. But uh, yeah, um, look, anytime you guys want to have a one-on-one -on -one with me about any kind of specific referrals, any of your clients that you have that you might find interesting, uh, you want to see what, how I would approach it, um, what, you know, what, what my experiences are like with businesses in that space, hit me up. I'm happy to talk about it at any point. It's what I'm here for. I'm literally the partner manager. So um, yeah, cool, Brennan. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, next month... Uh, if one of you guys wants to jump on and do any kind of like, you know, chat like Tom did, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll go and find somebody. Um, but, um, you know, the the regulars, you know, I'll give you guys a bit of favoritism there too. So um, anyway, thanks so much. Doesn't seem like anybody's got any questions, which is cool. No worries. Thank you, Fiona. And thank you, everybody. Cheers.